Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from isitautomation.com and welcome to another section of our automation testing with Puppeteer course. And in this section, we are going to talk about Puppeteer tidbits and this section is going to be like a section of some of the features which we have not discussed in our course before and some of the questions which has been asked in this course all these days from the day I released this course and some of the new features which has been released by Puppeteer and which we have not discussed before as well. Well, as that said, in this video, we're going to talk about working with XPath and some of the common mistakes that we all make while working with XPath. All right, so let's get started. Working with XPath. We all know that while working with XPath, the way that we identify the element is going to be a little bit different. As you can see in here, we have a page of type for the username with execute automation over here. So as you can see, I'm trying to type a value execute automation for the name is equal to username. So as you can see in here, the name is equal to username is going to be more like the CSS selector in here. But it is not a CSS selector, but it is the way that we can select the element. But if you want to select specifically with the X path, I guess we discussed about a little bit about that, but not in a more detailed fashion. So as you can see, for working with X path, all you're going to do is dollar x so this is the same way that we identify an element in the chrome dev tool and that's exactly what i did did in here as well so as you can see dollar x and then i put the double slash of the input of the at name is equal to username and then i'm returning that particular value as an array variable so that i can then perform an action over here so this is more like an expression that we can use to perform an action within that particular element so you can see i'm going to perform a type operation for that particular variable that i have got so this way we can work with the x path and we can also write the same code as you can see in here with this particular value as you can see here i'm going to resolve the promise something like this with the arrow function and then i'm going to perform a type operation but as you can see, this particular code really has got some mistake as well. And this is one of the most common error, which most of the time I have seen students are asking me like how that this code is like working, not the way that I have written it. Well, the problem is because as you can see, this is going to be an asynchronous programming language, which is nothing but our JavaScript. It's completely asynchronous programming language. And because the await statement is going to be applicable only until here for this particular element, and you're going to perform a then operation for the text and then you're going to perform a type operation so you don't really have resolved that particular promise in here so in order for that to be done you need to somehow make an async and await for these two as well which is nothing but the text type as well so the common error with js async is this so you need to have an async and await for each and every operation that you need to do because we're going to perform a sequence of operation in the ui control well as that said the code of this kind of fashion should look something like this as you can see in here i have used the async keyword and then an await keyword to perform a type operation so we'll see all the discussion that we have did in here in our visual studio code and we'll see how things works so for that i'm gonna flip to my mac operating system all right so i'm in my mac operating system and i'm gonna unzip this udemy puppeteer this is the same code that you are seeing in here in within your cores as well and this is the source code that i have taken from our last section so as i said i'm just gonna copy this particular path name and i'm gonna open the item terminal and it open in my different window so and i'm gonna open the visual studio code which is this one so now you can see that i actually have the same project that we were discussing all these days until our earlier section and now i'm gonna switch my focus all the way to the section two as you can see in here so you can see that we have written this code in our section two, pretty much like how we perform a certain particular kind of operation like working screenshot, trace, and PDF and kind of stuff. So in this section, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start working with a particular feature of our application. So as that said, I'm just going to create a new folder I'm just going to call this a section five. I know this is not section five in our course, but I'm just going to put that over here so that you can have a complete different section of our discussion that we are doing in over here. So I'm just going to copy this code and then I'm going to paste it over here. 
and I'm going to name this as XPath. And what I'm going to do is basically I'm just going to change this to page one because all these days this page two is really creating all the problems. Uh, so I'm just going to get rid of that and I'm going to change this to page as well. Change this to page. Uh, right. And we don't really require the PDF stuffs in here. And our code looks pretty good right now. So this is the one that we are going to be working with this particular code. So I'm going to quickly navigate to the section five and we can just do the uh, node of xpath.js to execute this particular code. But in order for working with the xpath, as you can see here, this particular code for the particular username, as you can see here, we can also identify this particular element using an xpath. So for doing that, I'm just going to open my Chrome browser and I'm going to navigate to our Exit Automation demo site. And over here, this is the username text box. And if I just go over here, uh, let me just make this over here. And if I go to the console and if I just do a dollar $x and then in order to identify this input text box, I'm just going to type input or uh, maybe double slash of input and you can see that I have already typed so Chrome dev tool actually brings that for me so you can see at name is equal to username is going to bring me up this particular username basically right so this is how I can identify this particular element so this is the xpath that we should be worrying about right now so I'm just going to copy this particular xpath and if I try to put the value xpath over here something like this and this save it and now if i try to execute this particular code uh, you can see that we actually get this error the reason being uh, we also have to install the puppeteer so i'm just going to do an npm install because i just unzipped this particular code from our course so we should have all these particular uh, package within our project And you can see that we actually get this error and it says that failed to execute the query selector on the document with this particular uh, locator that we are trying to pass. So this is not the valid way of passing the xpath over here. So if you try to pass an xpath something like this, you are going to get an error. And we have already discussed about that in our earlier videos of this course. So in order for that to be resolved, as we already discussed, we need to somehow do what is called as uh, a const of the txt username is equal to page dot dollar x so if you remember we just did with the chrome with the dollar x so i'm just going to do the exact same thing with dollar x and then i'm gonna paste this particular x path over here and if you do something like this and if you try to type a value you can see that i actually need to do if I hit a dot, you can see that the return value of the dollar $x is actually a promise of the element handle. So in order for the element handle to be handled even more better way, like returning an array, you actually can make this particular constant as an array, something like this. And then if you just hit dot, you can see you can do a send keys and stuff. That works basically. If not, you can actually do a something like a a zero and then you can do a send key basically so this is the best practice of doing it and that's what puppeteer team are actually telling us to do that so i'm just going to do that as well so i'm just going to do an await as we know this is like an asynchronous programming so uh, we just have to do a type and i'm just going to pass a value execute automation over here that's it so with that sense, I'm just going to remove this particular uh, code or maybe just comment this particular piece of code. So this way, the above code actually will type the value exit automation in our uh, username. So I'm just going to stop this particular uh, test execution over here. And then now if I try to execute this particular piece of code, oops, so maybe I just want to make this guy as false. And now if I execute, uh, oh, sorry for that. I just have to make this as a wait as well. I uh, completely missed that. So now if I try to execute this. And you can see that the value is currently being typed over here. So this way you can see that we can actually work with XPath much efficiently using this particular selector. But the next question comes is like how we can actually 
work with uh, the select R in a very different fashion, like resolving the promise, as you can see in here, it returns the promise for us, uh, which has to be resolved with the element handle. So the better way of doing it is actually, I'm just gonna put this guy over here, and we can use the uh, then statement, then of the txt uh, username, and with this particular txt username, I can actually perform an action of uh, selecting the zero dot uh, type. So you can see that I now get the element handle. I then can type the value execute automation over here. It's a, exactly like the same above code, but just that it's a little bit different uh, in the way we are resolving that particular promise. So if I do this, as we discussed in the slide, it's not gonna basically work. So let's quickly see what is the funny behavior of how JavaScript actually execute this particular piece of code. So if I execute this, you can see what's really happening there. It just types some values which are coming in sequence basically. So because we know that JavaScript is asynchronous, it's gonna take all the values like admin, KK, and all those stuff, gonna put them mix and match and then it's typing all the value over here. So this behavior is not gonna be same every time. It's gonna change based on the delay or the execution thread. So basically you need to have this, what is called as an async, and then what is called as an await statement here. So if you do this fashion, the code actually executes as expected. But again, Puppeteer team actually recommend us to work with the element handle in the first way of how I showed you the code with the XPath, that way the code actually looks much neater and better as well. So if you are very fan of writing the promise in this fashion, you can do this or you can do in this fashion as well. So this is how you can work with the XPath and these are some of the common mistakes I have seen. Many questions coming for this course, not only this course and also for the Cypress course. This is how you can resolve this particular problem. So once again, thank you very much for watching this video. Meet you in our next video.